The Reserve Bank of India has finally issued the much-awaited circular on restructuring COVID-impacted uh, corporate loans. And the man who has uh, drafted the uh, parameters on which this restructuring should be done is with me, uh, Mr. K.V. Kamath, who is chairman of that committee. Mr. Kamath, thank you very much indeed for joining us. And many congratulations for doing such an elaborate job in such a short time. Uh, it's only a veteran banker who could have done that. Uh, I want to start with that quadrant you presented. I think that is the richest quadrant I have seen in terms of the impact of COVID. But its uh, takeaway is a little alarming. 72% of all uh, corporate loans or all loans are impacted by COVID, you're saying? Uh, thank you uh, for having me. I think firstly, I have to thank uh, my team members and uh, the Reserve Bank for giving us, uh, you know, the boundary conditions very clearly, you know, which facilitated you know, our work greatly. Coming to the quadrant and uh, the outline of uh, structure, as I see it, you know, uh, it is not so allowed since I take a different view. It's probably the glass half full or the glass half empty. Okay. Uh, if, you, uh, if you look at it, uh, the last quarter uh, or the quarter before that were the two most impactful quarters. And uh, we had the GDP down by 25%. Uh, to me, it was not a surprise. And uh, the numbers that we see in terms of uh, the impact, the quarters that you're talking about, are consistent with uh, that sort of uh, drop because virtually all of India was shut and uh, virtually all of manufacturing was shut uh, except towards, I would say, the month of June, when uh, slowly things started uh, looking up. So I think uh, this was uh, probably the worst impact that we had uh, because of uh, the lockdown reflected in the assessment of uh, the quadrants uh, by the lenders. Okay. Uh, it's, but uh, since you looked at the numbers fairly closely, sir, would you say that uh, uh, we could see a lot of... Uh, uh, loans slipping into the red because you know you have about uh, uh, 22 lakh crore or 42 percent which were already weak and have gotten a little weaker because of covid uh, that is your top right quadrant and then you have uh, uh, another 15 and a half lakh crores which were also already weak before uh, uh, covid hit so do you think at the end of this exercise uh, we could end up with that you know uh, 13 14 percent of uh, NPAs that RBI mentions in its uh, financial stability report. Um, you know, let's let's put that in uh, context. You know, I think uh, uh, this weakness was a systemic weakness that was already prevalent. But countering that is the fact that these assets that we have put in the conference were assets which uh, we believe uh, uh, you know uh, there's a very large mass of assets mm. which were uh, in performing status not more than yes. 30, yes. 30 days overdue. To me, that is the big comfort in these numbers. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, the pressure that was there on industry pre-COVID, very well, little we can do about it. Okay. I think if it was in uh, performing status on uh, the cutoff day, I think that is where I think we have tried to see how can uh, you know the banks and their uh, borrowers take advantage of this uh, step taken by Reserve Bank. This is a far-reaching step. Uh, I don't think as a banker I would have expected. Uh, somebody to come up with uh, a, a structure which is so facilitated, but I think it was done. And uh, I would think that uh, this is something that industry and uh, bank should embrace and uh, move along. Okay. No, certainly. I mean, I have absolutely no complaint about that. Uh, the way in which the Reserve Bank has gone up, both the speed and the pragmatism and uh, uh, similar objectives I would apply to your committee as well. But, uh, uh, you know, there are some uh, initial problems. You know, the, I, the Reserve Bank rule says that if you can't agree with uh, the uh, restructuring uh, package, uh, the RP, the res resolution plan, then banks can opt out by taking a 20% provisioning. Now, you know, private sector banks have uh, in the last six months accumulated enough capital from a rather giving market. Do you think that they may rather opt out than go through another pain of uh, resolution? Yeah, it all depends on, uh, you know, um, what, for, what constitutes the majority. Okay. And uh, our, uh, you know, trying to... Uh, Assume certain thing may not be uh, fully right in this context. A, B, I would think uh, every customer of every bank uh, will have pain if uh, they are in those uh, quadrants. Uh, and I would think that uh, a bank will have really, very little leeway to say that, you know, 
I'm going to take a different, uh, I'm going to sit at a different level and I'll make that extra provisioning and I'll get my money. Uh, the fact is, he may not be able to uh, get that money from the client because the client may not have the wherewithal to pay. And uh, very soon, a quarter or so down or two quarters down, uh, this may be an NPA staring in uh, the bank's face, that particular bank's face. So we will have these sort of complications. I'm sure bankers will take a very, uh, you know, I would say considered view and uh, come to a resolution which is uh, equitable to themselves and to their clients. Okay. All right. Now, there is, of course, even your committee will be vetting the resolution proposals for the large ones, uh, 1,500 crore plus uh, uh, proposals. Now, Mr. Kamath, you know, if we have to get to a debt servicing ratio of 1 or 1.2, that may not be obviously possible this year. You are expecting that by March uh, uh, 22, uh, 2022, the uh, ratios should be reached. Likewise, for debt equity, uh, you are expecting that it reaches 4 or 4.5 uh, by uh, 22, if not immediately. Now, all this will depend on what growth you are assuming. Uh, you know, we just had Fitch saying that uh, they're expecting India's GDP to be minus 10 this year. And uh, they probably will say plus 5 next year or I don't know their uh, next year's number. It is possible that the rating agency will not agree to the growth assumptions. You don't see that as a problem? Uh, uh, let us suffice to say that, uh, you know, I won't uh, elaborate too much, but suffice to say, in this exercise, we have had... Uh, the wisdom of uh, both uh, lenders, rating agency, and other uh, participants. Okay. Uh, and after that, we read numbers. We did not try to prescribe a number which we thought could be, uh, uh, you know, it, it could could happen. So there was some, uh, uh, you know, dialogue in uh, coming to an assessment. And broadly, let me say this: most people uh, say yes, this year is going to be a challenge. But most people, based on uh, what challenge you have faced this year, expect the next year's numbers. Uh, to have, uh, you know, recovered. Next year, meaning 21-22. Uh, and I think it's based on that that uh, we have picked those numbers. One more thing. See, the whole exercise is, uh, you know, a recast of uh, you know, the company's operations. Yes. Uh, it, it's a two-way process. The company and uh, the bank sit together in the first instance with whatever advisors the company may have and recast the cash flow. The banks will have to be, you know, skillful enough to recast it in such a way that when payments happen, and the Reserve Bank, again, you know, uh, I must compliment them, have given the banks enormous leeway. Yes. As long as your overall moratorium doesn't exceed two years, you have a degrees of freedom how to design the repayment schedule within that uh, context. And there it is where, uh, you know, the ratio is coming important because you can always have a structure where your repayment is brought down for the years where the bank and the client senses pain and then goes up so that you do not trigger a situation where you have a, a ratio which is under stress. That is why one, you cannot have a ratio below one because if there are payments, then you need to make sure that your interest and uh, principal mm. is service. Yes. So I think it has been done with that in mind, mm. giving the bank and the client leeway to structure it appropriately. And the same goes with the, with the, with the debt equity ratio that uh, you, if you are constrained in your servicing ability, then additional capital has to be brought in and yes. the ratio has to be corrected. Yes. If yes. you are not, that is, your profitability comes back and you are generating cash to that level, then you have the freedom to uh, structure it within uh, uh, you know, the available uh, uh, accretion to network from your uh, profit. So we are not uh, second-guessing what a client could do or the bank could do, but I think we are trying to give a leeway that uh, in a, I would say, appropriately restructured case uh, should be available to a bank and its client mm. uh, to uh, come back to what I would call the new normal. Mm. No, I agree with you, sir. In fact, uh, a lot of bankers showered praise on, the, uh, on you and the committee for actually defining the net worth correctly by deducting what the company may have invested out of its equity in subsidiaries and associate companies. So, you know, uh, you did get a lot of kudos for that. But what I'm only saying is that, you know, a lot of people have to agree on the growth assumptions. The rating agency has to agree. All the consortium banks have to agree. Your committee has to agree. And uh, there may be uh, differing levels of optimism on India's V-shaped recovery. So I'm just wondering if a lot of cases could get stimmied. Um. Again, you know, I go back to uh, the beginning here, uh, Lata. You know, what heartens me is uh, the large 
uh, you know, a percentage of cases which are uh, in uh, uh, this category, which, uh, you know, lend themselves to uh, this restructuring. B, you know, whichever way we look at it, except, uh, uh, you know, the extreme uh, cases where we will need uh, probably uh, uh, innovative uh, restructuring. By that, I mean, uh, well, probably a little bit complex, probably is the right word, complex restructuring, where uh, you will have to do interest rescheduling, re yes. principal rescheduling, maybe some conversion is required. Yes. But all other cases, I think uh, the companies come back to normal very uh, quickly. Oh. But uh, again, uh, I can't second guess what will happen uh, in, in, the, in the course of uh, the next two years because of, uh, you know, we don't know exactly where uh, this disease is uh, going to take us and how quickly it is going to be addressed. All that uh, banks and uh, borrowers can do at this stage is try to correct the situation as is visible yes. and then uh, proceed on that basis. Yeah. I'm sure, uh, you know, a key part here is, as you said, uh, for the very large cases, you have uh, the rating exercise uh, also uh, coming in. Mm. I think that gives uh, the banks and uh, indeed the borrower a comfort that uh, in what has been done mm. uh, is working. Okay. No, I, yes, I, I guess that is why uh, the, I guess the Reserve Bank wanted your committee to continue so that uh, you give that comfort uh, to the bank's uh, restructuring plans. They very much need it after the trying times that they've gone through. So, but I wanted to ask you about uh, the, you know, you said you can put the uh, cases in three buckets, uh, mod moderate, uh, 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 severe and very severe. How much do you think is in the very severe uh, category? Uh, I think as speculative, and since oh. uh, uh, I would put it as a mild, moderate, and uh, yes, yes, or, uh, severe or, or severe uh, stress. Mm. Uh, you know, it would be right to say broadly that uh, the, the top right hand quadrant, quadrant mm. needs special attention. Okay. I don't want to say all of them would be in severe, oh, right. because some of them are interesting. If you see the the, the power sector, mm. it's come back to uh, its capacity very soon. Yes. There are other challenges yes, which yes. need to be addressed. Yes, so. Uh, I think all of them won't be in the same uh, category, mm. and uh, it's uh, a lot of them will be codependent mm. uh, on uh, something else, okay. which is in some other sector. Yeah. So uh, we will have clarity uh, during the course of uh, probably between now and uh, mm. March next year okay. uh, to get a fix on what exactly is going to happen. Please hang on for a minute, sir. I have to take a break. We are coming back with lots more questions.